Today I'm going to do a quick analysis on Darden restaurants and see if it's a good stock to buy. So I'm going to use the Beat the Market Analyzer or the BTMA Stock Analyzer. So it's at btmastockanalyzer.com. It's also in a, an Apple app. I'm going to click Analyze Stocks and type in DRI as the symbol or you can type in the company name here. Okay, DRI Restaurants, uh, it's most known for Olive Garden, Texas Longhorn, Bahama Breeze, used to own Red Lobster, so those kinds of casual dining restaurants. All right, so right off the bat, it says the market price is currently at $113, and the analyzer recommends to buy around $113. So let's look further. It says that it's a good company and a bargain price. Uh, company rating is 81 out of 100. So this gives like a report card score. Uh, anything above 70 points is considered a good potential investment. If we break down the company rating score, we can see here that for upward price per share, it has 15.5 out of 17. So pretty good with a 10-year upward price per share. The return on equity is very good, perfect score here. Uh, earnings, you want to see that it's consistent and rising over the last five years, so it has 14.6 out of 16, so pretty good overall. Uh, ability to recover from a market crash or downturn, so apparently it is able to recover, and this score looks at if the stock can recover uh, within like three to four years from market downturn. So from 2008, the economic crisis, um, DRI was able to recover within about that four year period. Return on invested capital uh, has 12 out of 12, so good score. And gross margin, not so good, 8.6 out of 12. So apparently Darden is hurting with their margins and this will hurt the overall profits. Okay, PG ratio. So this looks at if the stock is a high growth company uh, over a long period of time, not just one year. So right now it's not marking that it's, it's a high growth uh, stock over a long period of time. Okay, and there's our score again. And we're going to break these down. We're just going to click here on the ticker. So this is the price word, the price upward trend over the 10 years. And you can see overall the price has been increasing over the 10 years. Uh, pretty consistently there was a lot of growth between 2016 and 2019. Uh, the price per share went down slightly in 2020. But overall we like to see this, that it's, it's pretty well increasing over the years. Uh, EPS, we'd like to see the same thing with the, with the uh, EPS score over the past five years and overall it is increasing but the problem is it's somewhat volatile with their earnings as you see uh, it, it had fallen down in 2014 it had fallen again in 2016 so this is a little bit too volatile um, and doesn't really match the price upward uh, trend. You can see how much smoother this is. We'd like to see the EPS match that. So that's a little concern about the volatility. And it could also be because it's a restaurant business. So possibly in the summer, more people are going to the restaurants and less in the winter. So it could be a seasonal thing as well. But pay attention to that because if you hold this stock, you're going to be susceptible to these ups and downs of this type of uh, volatility. Market recovery, again, that's what I was telling you about. Uh, it is able to recover. It has 15 out of 15 points. Okay, return on equity. Return on equity, we look for 16 or above over a five-year period, and you can just click on these. Uh, information icons to see what you're looking for here. So 
it is over 16. Um, but again, there is some volatility there. It went from 32, cut in half, to about 18, and then it went back up. But overall, you can see that the, the ROE stays above 16, so that's good. And it is trending upward, which is another positive thing. The ROIC, or Return on Invested Capital, again, we're looking for 16 or higher. We'll tell you in here. And it is 16 and higher, but again, some volatility. It is more or less on an upward swing, which is good. Gross margin percent, we're going to look for 30 and above, but you could see that it doesn't meet this requirement. The highest it got was 22.2. So there's some issue with Darden and its gross margin percent. So if you were interested in buying this stock, stock, you'd want to look more into that with their gross margins and how this compares with the industry. But obviously there are much uh, better stocks in terms of gross margin percent, having a higher gross margin percent than Darden restaurants. This was the PEG ratio. So with this, we're looking for between 0 and 1 for a score. Uh, so right here in 2018, this was showing that there should have been some growth. And we saw the next year there, there was some growth from 2018 to 2019 in the price per share. But overall, these other scores that are outside of one, um, it doesn't really indicate any uh, great growth that's about to happen in the company. All right, if we go back, now we're going to look at the stock value. So the intrinsic value, it says 124. Estimated value of stock is 125. As we said before, the current price is around 113. This is another valuation uh, method. It's the Buffett valuation method. And this this in the, enables you to compare expected annual compounding rates of return. So right now Darden is around 9.37, little less than the overall S&P 500 market index. Uh, here we can see that average EPS growth rate over the past five years was 11.3%, so pretty good. And if there's 0% growth, then the stock would be valued at around 95. So if you're going to be more conservative, then you might want to buy closer to this $95. But I'll stress that you don't want to focus all of your energies on just one valuation metric, like the Buffett valuation. You want to look at a variety of valuation methods and kind of get a good idea what the stock's worth. So we're going to go and look at various valuations valuation metrics. We're going to click here on intrinsic value. And we have price earnings valuation model, residual income, discounted cash flow or DCF, and then we have an overall average. So the price earnings module or uh, model is giving us again at 0% growth it would be around 95 if you're going to be more conservative. If there's 3% growth, around 110. 10% growth, so you can see how it goes up. Residual income, this more or less tells us more about uh, physical assets, the tangible assets of the company. So we can see it does have tangible assets, and something around $51 it would be valued at. If we look at discounted cash flow, we're going to see that it says $186. So this might be quite high. It's predicting 15% growth for the next five years. And uh, six years to 10 years, it's predicting 7.5. So more conservative in the six to 10 years. So this 15% might be high. This is according to what has happened in the past. But if you think the future rate of return is going to be our future growth rate will be lower, then you can expect this 
amount to be much lower. And I am expecting it to be much lower after reading more about Darden and what's happening right now. Uh, it seems like they're facing some headwinds with their labor costs and uh, some different issues that they're having. Also, you want to keep in mind that gross margin percent is not very high. So these can factor in. And overall, the market is overvalued. It's about 155% of what it should be if 100% is fair value. So it's likely that the market will fall and Darden will fall with it when the market falls. So we want to factor that in. So my confidence level is not very high in Darden right now, uh, specifically in the stock and as the market in general. So I would tend to shoot for a more conservative valuation, maybe more in that uh, you know, $95 range or something like that so I could add a further margin of safety. Okay, I'm going to go back and look at the pricing. Another thing you want to look at is the price, not, not just the value. Value and price are, are different. So the price, the 52-week average midpoint, was around 116. So definitely we wouldn't want to buy over this. We'd like to buy closer to the 52-week low if we could. So it was around 104. Okay, miscellaneous fundamentals. Here we're going to be looking at more in the balance sheet. So the debt to equity, we want to see that it's less than one. But... Darden seems to have a lot of debt here. It's 2.3. So this is flagged with red. And so this is a concern. If you are interested in buying this company, you want to see why they have such high debt. And is this normal for, for this type of company and for Darden? Is this higher than in the past? Obviously, there are a lot other companies that have a low or no long-term debt. So if you're looking for a more... Uh, a safer company, then you might want to look for one that has a debt to equity of less than one. Current ratio is also flagged. It should be greater than one, and here it is 0.34. So if you need any help in figuring out what these mean, you could just click on the icon here, and it tells us this. This basically tells us its ability to use its assets to pay off its short-term debt. So right now, this is flagged. Uh, PG rate or PE ratio, we're looking at less than 16 usually, and this will depend on the company and the industry. Uh, typically, Darden does have a high PE ratio, but um, in general, most stocks, if you see a PE ratio of under 16, then it's it's likely at a good bargain. So this might indicate that Darden is is overpriced right now. Uh, Darden is a pretty big company, and uh, the dividend yield over the trailing 12 months was 2.99%, uh, so almost 3%. So it's pretty pretty decent dividend that it offers. Then here, this just gives the complete view, and you're able, able to uh, just scroll through all the windows here that we talked about. So overall, I feel that uh, Darden is uh, pretty decent with its fundamentals, could use improvement in some areas, such as the gross uh, margin percent, and also that those areas that we talked about over here, the debt to equity and the current ratio. Not the best company uh, to invest in. There are other companies that are better, as I said, uh, safer with less debt to equ equity and ones that are at more of a bargain price, which uh, looks like Darden could be bought at more of a bargain price than the 113 that it's at now if you want to get around $95 or something if you're going to be more conservative and add a margin of safety. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick analysis of Darden, and you can check in the video description. Uh, there's a free trial to check out this PTMA stock analyzer if you want to look up some stocks yourself. Have a great day.